All right, it says we're live. Ivan here. Good morning. How you doing? Hope you're having a great day. I want to do a haircut. You know, everybody knows I love to cut hair. Everybody knows haircutting's kind of weird right now. I'm not cutting hair. I'm not working in a shop. You know, coronavirus. But that doesn't mean I'm still not getting my hands in a little bit of hair. So what I thought I would do this morning, not a fancy class, not a formal presentation. I'm just going to cut this guy's hair. And I'm going to walk my way through it and talk my way through it and share with you a little bit about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I'm sure you can get some things out of it, some things you can use. That'll be good for everybody, and it'll be fun. Along the way, if you've got questions or comments, hit me, hit me. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. You know how all that stuff goes. I'm recording this here and presenting this here live on Facebook. And later, I'll upload the video to YouTube so more people can see it there as well. All right, let's jump into it. Let's keep it simple. I've been hacking on this guy a little bit. I demoed some things on him, played around with him a little bit just for fun, but uh, we got to turn him into a haircut. Everybody knows I love my Mariana mannequins. This is Brad from Mariana. Um, really, really pleased with uh, the way this mannequin works for me. Uh, great wefting pattern in it in terms of the way the hair lays, falls, and flows for doing haircut demonstration. Um, I don't do a lot of facial hair work, so I don't generally pick up a bearded mannequin uh, for the demos that I do. Of course, you can get them with a beard if you want. Um, but it's got a good head of hair. The density's right. The length, when they're fresh out of the box, is long enough that you can work with it well. So uh, from this kind of hacked up situation, I am just going to do a really nice, clean, classic taper. And I'm going to cut it the way I cut it in the shop. I'm going to cut it the way I've cut it for years. Uh, I will say nothing special, but it's very special because it works. It's a system that I've come to use that I approach when executing haircuts like this. And hey, Chris, good to see you. Um, thanks for checking in. Um, we're going to have some fun with it. We're going to do some good stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dampen him first. Um, right away, if I'm doing a classic clipper taper haircut and I pick up the water spray bottle, a lot of people pause and go, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wet hair? Are you going to cut hair with a clipper with wet hair? Yes, I am. I am going to cut hair with a clipper with wet hair. Um, it helps the hair lay and fall and flow and go where I want it to. If you're good about cleaning and oiling the clipper, the moisture or the hydration in the hair is not a problem. I don't want the hair dripping wet, but I do want the hair damp enough that I have some degree of control over it. So. Dampen the hair a little bit. That's just water in the water spray bottle. Uh, some people add some things to your water spray, and I don't think that's a bad idea. I'm a big fan of cutting lotions or cutting with products in the hair. A uh, couple suggestions in the cutting lotion category. Uh, Biovitatin leave-in spray. That's a John Amico professional product. That is step three in their thin and fine hair formula. This particular product adds body and texture. Uh, it's great to cut with. Uh, cutting with product in the hair helps maintain even and consistent moisture, distribution, tension, hydration throughout the haircut. You get cleaner partings, you get better tension, and you get better cutting with product in the hair. So that's one that I use. The other one, and anybody wants a free sample of this, uh, reach out to me with a DM, send me a message, and I will absolutely send you a free sample of this. This is John Amico. Uh, biological minerals and oils. Uh, we call it minerali oil. This is a uh, conditioning treatment product, if you will, but it comes in these vials or these ampules. You crack the top off this and you put, I would say, about a quarter of what's contained in here into your water spray bottle, just a little bit. Um, again, it's not bad for the tools. It's great for the hair. Uh, fabulous cutting lotion, also a tremendous conditioning product. So anybody wants a free sample of that, just reach out to me with a DM. I will get you a free sample of this product. Comes with the flyer with all the literature and information on what it's all about. Uh, a really, really fabulous product. Those of you that do any kind of reactive chemical services, whether it be color, highlights, uh, relaxers, straighteners, perms, things like that. That product as a after service in conjunction with service treatment is awesome. Now, my favorite product for men's hair for cutting with product in the hair is my Clipper Guy 
classic wax. Now, it's a light blend, smooth blend formula wax. It's not hard, stiff, sticky, or tacky. Um, it's a light wax. And remember, sanitation optics. We are not going in this jar with this finger. We're not going in this jar with a knuckle or a hand. We're going in this jar with a clean, individual popsicle or craft stick, just like that. Take it out. And when we're done, we're going to throw the stick in the garbage can. We're going to get another one. This is really important that clients see you doing things like this to know that you are super clean and super, super safe in the haircutting that you're doing and in the way you're taking care of him. I'm going to tip the camera up just a little bit. I'm more interested in you getting a good look at him than getting a good look at me because my hair is already cut. I don't need another one. Um, right there. Now it's on the hand. The stick over there in the garbage can. And I work that around. I heat that up with my hands. It's already a smooth blend formula, but you can't see any of that on my hands anywhere. And I'm going to work this through the hair before I do my hair cutting. I got the hair wet and I'm applying that smooth blend wax to damp hair. This is going to derive for me or deliver for me an incredible level of control as I work with and through the hair. So I'm going to get that all from my hands onto the hair. Now, when you do this with a client in the shop, tell them what you're using. Hey, that's Clipper Guy Classic Wax. Tell them that you're using it because it helps you deliver a better haircut. And also tell them that you're putting it in now and you're not going to take it out because when we're done cutting and we move from here into styling and finishing, the product is already in their hair. It's been in their hair. It's going to feel good. It's going to look good. They're going to be happy with it. And that's going to lead you to moving more of this product off the shelf, out the door, into their house, and into their bathroom. And at the end of the day, your bottom line profitability will depend on your ability to move product as well. You can't just make money on haircuts alone. You've got to build your average ticket uh, through some product selling. So uh, one of the principles with which I cut hair, and when I say the principles with which I cut hair, I'm not kidding when I tell you it's practically every haircut. Principles are the things that are the foundations of what you do that are never, ever, ever going to change. One of my haircutting principles is when possible, as often as possible, cut the top first. Now, by the way, while I've been talking, if you haven't seen, I wiped down my scissors, which were sanitized the last time I used them. I wiped them down and I oiled my scissors. We do a lot of work with our scissors. Our hands do a lot of work with our scissors, wiping up any excess oil from around the pivot mechanism. Just enough oil that the scissors is well lubricated. Uh, that's gonna put a lot less strain on my arm when I am doing the scissor cutting that I'm doing. So the principle here is cut the top first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and square layer the top. It's gonna be horizontal, side to side, horizontal, front to back. Shortest hair at top dead center, moving longer to the front as the hairline curves away, and moving longer to the back as we square out the rear crown. Same thing at the sides. This is gonna be your classic tapered haircut. This is how I execute this when cutting in the shop. And one thing I'm gonna do first, before I do that, is I'm gonna strike my front hairline. I'm gonna take the front hair line, I'm gonna comb it down, and I'm gonna cut it off, just sort of getting it up and out of my client's eyes. Now, I'm not too proud to tell you, this little technique here, this first cut across the front hairline getting the hair up and out of their eyes. That is something I learned literally first job in the business. First job in the business, establishing that baseline. We won't now cut the hair at the front too short because we've established a bit of a guide there. That's an offshoot of a cutting system I was introduced to when I first got into the business. And I'm also not gonna be shy about telling you where I got it. That tip came from Supercuts. That line right there, they actually start right back here, at least they did back in the day. It was cut here, cut here. We're establishing the exterior perimeter of the haircut. I don't need to cut the baseline on this one because I'm gonna actually taper the baseline off. But starting right there came out of that Supercuts education way back in the day. Now, it's been a long time since I've been part of their system 
And their hair cutting system very well may have been evolved, adapted, and changed a lot since I was a part of it. But I will tell you, you know, I started cutting hair in a chain, and I learned good things from the chain that I worked for. And to this day, 33 years later, I still use elements of the system I used, learned at that early job. So let's come in here, and I'm creating a top center parting from the front hairline to the top crown, little zippy mohawk strip at the top of the head. I'm gonna comb that hair up. Now I'm using my zoot comb and I'm using the wide side. I'm using the wide side, I'm scissor cutting, in this case with the wide side. I'm a big believer that men's hair and a lot of short haircuts in general, we don't need to be gender specific. By the way, looking for that guide, don't cut it. That's my front edge. I've established that guide coming back. Men's hair, generally speaking, should be cut with wide tooth combs. Just kind of some of my cutting philosophy. Here's why. You got a regular cutting comb. You got thin, fine teeth. You got big, wide teeth. Great cutting comb. Nothing wrong with this one. Love the red for high visibility. Thin, fine teeth for applying maximum tension to the hair. Big, wide teeth for lower tension and a looser approach to the hair. That's how a regular cutting comb is built. I've done some of those same things with the design of the zoot comb. I've got my thin, fine teeth on my handle end for my detailing, but I've got my wide teeth, my dual tension teeth for low tension. There's wide and wider if you want to look at it that way. This lets the hair lay, fall, go, and do where it lays and falls and goes and do's on its own where it wants to. This is not me telling the hair where to go and what to do. This is the hair really going and doing what it wants. And I think that's so important with a natural look and feel for a lot of men's haircuts. So we cut that top center stripe. You can see that's that section down the middle. Now I stand behind my client. I do what's called widening my guide. I'm going to stand behind. I'm going to comb straight up. I'm going to look for the guide in the middle and the two longer pieces of hair on either side of the guide. You notice I'm using a six and a half. This is my favorite size in the last several years for very, very general hair cutting. This is my workhorse. This is my all around. This is a six and a half inch offset handle, adjustable tension screw, fixed finger rest. This is a scissors in my CBO collection. CBO, that's Cosmo Barbarology. Uh, CBO was a class and CBO was a concept that I created a number of years ago to really blend the best of barbering education with the best of cosmetology education, CBO, Cosmo Barbarology. I coined the phrase, that's what we've used to describe kind of what we do. So now I've widened that guide. Now I'm gonna split my wide guide down the middle, take it to either side of a center parting. If you've been following the cutting pattern with me all along, what we now have is we have guide. We have guide on both sides of the top center parting. I'm now going to subdivide the top, moving back from the hairline, always looking for a piece of the previously cut section to serve as my guide. Now, I don't do a lot of micro fine sectioning through the top of the head. I do a lot of what's called scoop combing, where I'm scooping up sections of hair and combing it. Because again, we're talking about men's hair. We are not chiseling a precision perimeter Vidal Sassoon inspired bob here. If we were, you'd see me switch to the fine teeth on the handle end and you'd see some very, very small, very precise partings. But for this type of work that has the look and feel we're looking for in men's hair, and notice every time I lever that up, I pick that up, you're gonna see the guide at the top of my fingers, you're gonna see the longer hair, and you're gonna see me lever it up, match it up, and simply blend it off. That's it, guys. Combing it up, holding it up, cutting it off. Now, you see that scoop cutting, and again, the Sassoon-inspired precision sectioners, they tend to <clears throat> have a little bit of trouble with that scooping, however, it's okay to scoop like that when we're looking for more movement and texture, and it's okay to scoop like that when we're gonna also scoop. And what am I doing here? I'm cross-checking. 
I scooped it one way, I scoop it the other. And by the way, notice I don't move. I've been standing behind the mannequin the whole time because you, you, the camera is right there the whole time. This is the same way I would operate. This is the same way I would work in the salon, in the barber shop. I remain stationary and my chair turns. So I turn my chair. Okay, I've layered out that top with a nice basic square layering. I cut it one way. I cross-checked it another way. Now I'm just going to check my work. And that's what I'm looking for. You see how that's leveled off right in through there? That looks and feels good. That looks and feels even. We cut the front first to make sure it was going to be up and out of his eyes. And for our haircut objectives, I'm good with it. Well, that means it's time to move on. Now we're going to move on to perimeter work. I'm a big believer, and I said this earlier, and cut the top first. By cutting the top first and making sure we cut down around the head form a bit, that we cut into or intrude into the top edge of what is later to become our tapered perimeter, we take off a lot of what I call interior contributing weight. That's interior inside the haircut contributing weight. That's weight hanging down from above that really becomes the weight line that uh, challenges our tapering, that, that becomes intrusive to our tapering. So here's what we're going to do. We've layered first. We're going to taper second. We're going to get a lot of our blend on this as a freebie. We're going to get a bonus. It's going to blend in on its own in many ways automatically. So now it's time to taper. And when it's time to taper, one of the unique features of the zoot comb is the snap-on guard system. The snap-on attachment guides or guards that are custom designed to snap onto your zoot comb. If you haven't seen these in action, these are pretty cool. Check it out. The comb is basically the thickness of a number one guard. And the guards are a two and a three and a four. If you look at them, they're labeled four, half inch, 13 millimeters, with all the standard labeling demarcations that we know and love. Got to keep drinking while we keep talking. All right. I'm going to take my comb. I'm going to insert two of the teeth into the guard. I'm going to snap it back and snap it on. What I did now with the blue guard is that is now a number four snap-on attachment guide or guard. Now, there's no reason why I couldn't take my clipper and put on a four guard and come in and taper this up with a four. Could I do that? Of course I could do that. I know it's a four all day long. I can taper with guards. But instead, I'm going to use clipper over comb with the guard on my comb to control my distance, my depth, and my regulation. I'm going to use my standard rolling motion where I roll the comb till the top of the tips of the teeth are tipped out towards me. I'm going to say that again because I know you heard it. I'm going to roll my comb till the top of the tips of the teeth are tipped out towards me. I'm going to keep my comb at an angle because if you hold your comb horizontally where the hair accumulates in along the base of the teeth at the spine, you're going to get lines. You're going to get steps in your taper. You're going to get demarcations, and you don't want to do that. Now, I do also want to point out, when we hold up a comb, I always say hold up a quarter. Hold up a quarter by the edges just like that. You'll notice my comb, not an accident, right there is the thickness of a quarter. Not an accident, totally on purpose. You don't want to hold your comb with your thumb on the surface like that. Surface gripping requires you to torque your wrist like that. Holding it up with your thumb and forefinger, and we put the notches on the bottom of the comb for grip. We put that little finger indentation there for control. Beautiful. Now we're going to come in clipper over comb. Put that foreguard on. And by the way, lefty land, if you are out there in lefty land, you turn your comb over, you put your guard on the other hand, on the other side for the other hand. And now you can clipper left-handed with this same tool. It's designed to be reversible for lefties or righties, or those few of us who are truly ambidextrous and can cut with both sides. So we come to the back here, and we cut clipper over comb. We're resting the comb on the head. The guard of the comb is sitting directly 
on the head. And we're coming up. And we're combing up. We're keeping the comb at an angle, a slight angle, to create beautiful tapering at the center back of the head. We're using a technique we call panel cutting. Panel cutting is a system where we subdivide the head into a series of vertical panels. Right there, panel number one. We're going to cut panel number one till we like panel number one. Only when we're happy with panel number one do we then move on to panel number two. Panel number two represents an overlap, 50% of previously cut panel number one serving as my guide and 50% new hair next door. Here we go. And notice when I set my comb like that, you see the short hair in panel number one comes right up to the comb and there's panel number two and we're looking beautiful. We move on to panel number three. In panel number three, we're going to do it again. And yes, a common question I get at this point is, hey Ivan, is the comb resting on the head? And the answer is yes. I'm rolling the comb out, rolling the comb out, but I am definitely resting that comb directly on the client's scalp. Now that took me about four panels to get to the, from the back to the back of the ear. Good to go. We're going to stop. We're going to pause. We're going to move now to the area in front of the ear. Now at this point, a light mist to keep him hydrated. I'm going to section out the top and I'm going to retain the top with a hair gripper just like that. And now I'm going to come in beneath that area. This is all being cut with a four. So it's not truly tapered yet. At this point, if it's all cut with a four, it's all a four. We're going to go lower, and we're going to begin to turn that one length perimeter into a truly tapered perimeter in just a few moments. But this will set us up with the base of what will become a really nice haircut. When we're happy with that, of course, standard haircutting language, repeat on the opposite side. I'll try to look at it from a little bit of a different angle this time, let you see it a little bit differently. Once again, isolating the top with a gripper, just so it doesn't interfere. And we'll come in and we'll cut. Again, with my four guards. Look, I'm doing clipper over comb. I'm doing it carefully. I'm doing it deliberately. I'm doing it with a great degree of control. And all I've really done from a functional standpoint is I've moved the guard from here. I took the guard off the clipper and I moved it over to the comb. I put the guard on the comb. Coming my way up from the back. And we'll connect to center back, panel number one, in the middle of the back of the haircut. Looking good. Feeling happy about it. I've got a little area left here from the center back to the area at the client's right rear quarter. I just need to tie these areas together. And see how clearly and how cleanly and how visibly you know, there's a reason we did the zoot comb in gray. Dark hair, light combs, light hair, dark combs. You can't cut what you can't see. You know, a lot of us own a lot of combs that for various reasons are black. And black combs represent some visibility challenges. But we did the zoot comb. We deliberately created the zoot comb in a medium, light to medium gray, because you can see dark hair beautifully, and you can also see light and blonde hair beautifully in our zoot comb.
we give you that flexibility. That was not an accident. That happened on purpose. Now, having isolated the interior at the two sides, you will find there's a little bit of disconnect. There's a little bit of non-blending going on just in that upper corner. See that? Boom. That overhung just a little bit. And you know what I'm going to tell you? I'm not going to cut it off. I'm going to leave that little bit of disconnect there. When it's slicked back, when it's combed back, when it's put back, it's fine. But when it on its own, it kind of gets a little loose and flops a little bit with that little bit of disconnection, I think it still looks cool. All right. That was our interior layering, our foreguard to taper up the perimeter. Now we're going to use a concept that I have called skip guard tapering. Skip guard is the idea that were we using regular snap-on guards in a regular way, I would use my four, I would skip my three, and I would go to my two. Well, friends, here with my zoot comb and the zoot comb system, snap-on guards, nothing's going to change. I use my four. I'm going to skip my three. I'm going to go to my two. Here's my two. I'm putting that two on there. Snap it on nice and clean. And now I'm going to go back to my perimeter. I'm going to go back to the center back. And I'm going to begin to taper the perimeter now with my two guard, with my shorter guard. I'm going to work my way from the center out to the sides, just as I originally did with my four. I'm now going to use my two. And where my two blends up into my four, I'm going to wind up with a really nice, smooth, even, blended transition. Notice how I'm doing this. I'm coming up off that comb, and I'm moving up from my two up into my four. I'm tightening up the perimeter of that haircut. We can come in here. I don't need to use a gripper to isolate the top this time. I can simply come in with my two guard on my comb and detail away. Yeah, a little reverse action there. You caught me on that. That's just me seeing, hearing, and feeling the haircut and in the moment doing what I need to do to do what I need to do. In that case, I needed to power off that little extra bit of overhang. I had the tool, so I went for it. Now, all the while, and one of the questions I do get from time to time is regarding the lever. Where's my lever on my adjustable blade clipper? All the while, with all of the clipper over comb I've been doing, my lever has been in the close, the closed, or the triple zero position. Just like the calibration with snap-on guards, that's a four. That's a four when the clipper is guarded and closed with the lever all the way up. That's still a four. In this case, lever up with a two guard, that's a two. Because you have to factor in, although it's a small length, it's not negligible, the thickness of the rear blade of the clipper blade itself. It comes into your equation. So, we used our scissors to cut our top. We used our four. We used our two to refine our taper. Now I'm going to come in. I'm going to open up my lever and I'm going to begin to gently fade in the bottom edges. Now, at this point, were I with a client, and I will do it with a mannequin as well, I'm going to switch from my zoot comb to my fade brush, my dual texture fade brush. If you haven't seen these, these are kind of cool. They're called dual texture. The short way across the brush, they're soft, and the long way across the brush, they're firm, soft and firm. They're hospital grade silicone, they're fully sanitizable, they're 50 state legal, they're two for 11 bucks on the website, they're inexpensive, and they're perfect. Well, that one's on the floor now. 
They're perfect for the haircutting we're doing. We use the soft side to clear away the clippings, to brush away the clippings so that we can see our work. And we use the firm side to lift or scuff the hair. Notice how I do that? I lift or scuff the hair to get the hair to stand up and out and off of the head so my clipper can grab it. Now, look at that corner versus that corner. See how that one's a whole lot heavier and thicker? And see how that one's beautifully tapered in? Notice the white background. Notice the white shirt. When I went to do this video this morning, I was going to wear a black t-shirt. I said, no, 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 I'm cutting. Got to get a white shirt on. I cut hair in a white shirt. Notice when I stand behind that, you can see that taper. It's a backdrop. The backdrop becomes a backdrop. It really is a high visibility tool to help us do better hair cutting. So, fade brush in hand, open clipper blade. we begin to fade in the perimeter of our haircut. It's choose your weapon. I used to have a class that I shared called choose your weapon. It was a tools focused class and it really talked about what are the tools that we use to cut hair and the idea that every clipper, every scissors had a comb or a brush that really worked with it. If you were picking up a scissors, you were gonna work off the wide end of your zoot comb. If you were gonna reach for a trimmer, you were going to the fine end of that comb. The right comb, for the right tool, in the right situation, for the right job. So, let's finish up. One side, soft side, clear the clippings, firm side, scuff the hair. Let's go to the other side of this haircut. Little by little, we're working our way through the haircut here. I know for those of you out there cutting hair every single day, the weird thing about this video is I'm not wearing a mask. It feels odd to be cutting without a mask. You know, I've been getting my hair cut at a couple of different places, a couple of different shops within the community, and they're all wearing masks. They're all following sanitation and infection control uh, behaviors and, and, and whatnot to make sure they're protecting themselves, to make sure they're protecting their team members, to make sure they're protecting their customers and the greater community because, you know, if you're not careful with what goes on in your shop, you can even have an impact on people who are not customers of your shop, who are members of the community at large, who are friends and family and neighbors and classmates of the people that you're cutting. So it goes beyond just protecting the individuals that are actually sitting in our chair and buying haircuts from us. It's about being a member of the greater community. Hey, you know, I'm just a hair cutter. I only cut 20 people a day. But you reach an impact a lot more than that. A lot more than you ever know. With the things you do. And the ways in which you do them. Okay, so, recapping. Scissor cut my top. Four guard, two guard, no guard open blade with my fade brush. Now, I'm going to finesse my fade. I'm going to switch to my blender. This is my Clipper Guy Classic Blender. This is a 42 tooth, 46 tooth, I'm sorry, 46 tooth Classic Barber Blender. And we're going to use to address just a little bit of the high blend. We're going to come in at an angle and we're going to work at the wide teeth of our comb, combing out sections, looking for high points, jumps, bumps, skips, steps, ledges, ridges, or demarcations. I'm only going to come to the back of the ear. Remember that little bit of disconnect? I want to keep that little bit of disconnect. 
I'm coming back here. See the heaviness right there? That's what I am attacking right here. This is the Clipper Guy Classic Barber Blender. It's available for sale on my website at ivanzoot.com, clipperguy.com. They both go the same place. Go to the web store, go to Clippers and Scissors, and get yourself a Clipper Guy Classic Barber Blender. This is modeled off the most popular barber blender in the world with a few subtle improvements. I went with 440C stainless steel. I went with a better finger rest design. I went with an improved bumper design, and I went with an improved pivot mechanism. So you've got yourself a really, really nice tool there. Now, this was more of a heavy side. I have my disconnect in front of the ear, but I've got a little more interior weight up in through this top. So notice what I'm doing. I'm coming up under my scissors to blend that off just a bit. Looking good. Recap, we cut the top. Four guard, two guard, no guard open blending. Blending scissors to tidy up that blend. Remember, we have light wax in there. Look how that looks and feels. I have not really done anything that you would or could call styling this haircut yet, but it's dried down, it's begun to dry down with that product in it, and so it's looking really nice last up on the list we're going to go to the small end of our zoot comb we're going to pick up our trimmer now we're going to be doing our trimmer work sideburn clean it up i'm mocking through the cleanup there just because we're covering the things that you do i'm going to gently with my trimmer finesse the taper along that bottom edge the small end of your zoot comb it's thin, it's flexible, it's slightly curved or rockered. This is your ultimate haircut finishing tool. And we're coming in. Now notice the last tooth on the corner of a trimmer is fat, wide, round. And thick. I literally set that tooth, that fat, I call that the cruising tooth. I set that tooth on the client as I come around the perimeter of the haircut. I come in on that and I just do my fine tapering. Beautiful. Look at that side. Repeat on the opposite side. That's what we tell our haircut friends all the time. Rock my sideburn. Freehand in my edge. Put my cruising tooth on there. Cut to top dead center and stop. Go to my small detail end. Backside. heaviness right there finesse finesse this is the little things don't mean a lot they mean everything the details of your haircuts now I'm gonna come in along that bottom edge and gently 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 and notice I didn't block a line on this we talked in the beginning about setting our front length and setting our back length while our back edge is a tape around here. Now, I'm going to finish that up in a minute, but I want to remind you about ear hair. In the ear, on the ear. T-blade trimmer. I want to remind you about eyebrows. Detail comb. Comb them down. Clean them up. Nose hair. Zip, zip. Zip, zip. Disinfection. Remember, you want to get caught sanitizing. If I don't see you spray the clipper... I don't believe you did. Mm -hmm. 
soft side of the fade brush, clear away those clippings, get a look at what you've got. Make sure you, oh, nice taper, nice taper. All right, great. Now at this point, depending on the desired style and finish, you can dampen, you can go in with a blow dryer. At this point with this client, now remember, Clipper Guy Classic Wax was my cutting product. On damp hair, I might come in here, I might apply a small quantity of firm hold gel and blow him dry. At this point, the hair is pretty much dried down. If the hair was dry, I might go in with the matte paste. We've already got a little bit of wax in there as a foundation, but matte paste, and again, don't go in the jar with your hand. You go in the jar with your popsicle stick, a clean craft stick. I transfer the product to my hand, the stick in the garbage. Emulsify that, warm that up, spread that out, smooth it and thin it, and get it in the hair. This is going to give him firm hold, although into damp hair like this, the hold will not be as firm, but it's going to give him great pliability, great workability. All right, we covered our classic tools. We went clipper, trimmer, blender, scissors. Got them all. We went with both our zoot comb and our dual fade brush as tools. You saw those. You saw Cosmo Barbarology scissors. You saw Clipper Guy Classic Barber blenders. You, you saw grippers. We used some grippers. We used a couple different products. We talked about the leave-in reconstructor product that can be used as a uh, cutting lotion as well as a uh, reconditioning product. This one's pretty straight up. That texture, if you're liking that a little messier, or remember, you can also comb this back, smooth this out. And again, with that dry paste in there, a little bit of water will, will give it some flexibility. I can blow this up and blow the front up on this like a pump if I want, because I left some length in through the top. But we got a good, clean haircut. A basic, very basic haircut in terms of its technical construction. But I want to tell you, this is a foundational haircut. If And here, what did it take me here? With all of my talking and everything, this took me 42 minutes according to the timer. I was also talking about some products and talking about some tools and things. So it is very safe to say that without breaking a sweat, without struggling, I could have done that in half. I could have put that out in 20. Now I'm a firm believer, 3.0 haircuts per hour, 20 minute work is essential for $100,000 haircutter status. If you wanna make six figures in this business, you must be able to turn out good quality work, quality customer service experiences with good quality technical haircutting at a rate of 3.0 haircuts per hour. I think you can do that. I certainly was able to get very close to that number here this morning. Maybe we should do another version of this in real time. Maybe it would be cool. If you guys think that would be fun to watch, put a comment in the, uh, put it out in the comments here on the video. If you think you'd like to see me do one of these in real time, let's not do it as a educational experience. Let's just do it as a professional hair cutter as I would do it behind the chair for a client. I'll talk to the client. It wouldn't be the first time I talk to a mannequin. Um, you know, me down here alone in the basement with my lights talking to myself, it's kind of a comfortable place for me to be, but, um, that might give you an opportunity to see what that looks like in real time. Maybe that's what we'll do next week. Next week, we'll do this exact same haircut. We'll save this guy. We'll do the same haircut, and we'll turn him out um, in real time. That'll be the plan. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Go online. Visit uh, ivanzoot.com. Visit the uh, Patreon page where we have a lot going on. Get yourself some books. Get 100,000, get 100 by 100, get big and busy, and get big and busy in our business.
business. 100 by 100 is free. If you go to ivanzoot.com, you just pay shipping and handling. That's the deal that I'm still running on that book. People seem to be liking it. They seem to be taking advantage of that. So let's get to it. If you want information on Clifford Guy products, we featured a couple from me. And we talked about a couple from the greater John Amico Professional Hair Care brand. If you want to use technology to build and grow your business, if you want to use social media effectively to build and grow your business, you can be making hundreds of dollars a month, hundreds of dollars a month in product alone through the program and system I have with my John Amico Professional Hair Care brand. Just reach out to me. We can have a conversation about it. I can send you all the details and information for you to look at and we can do some business. I can help you build and grow your business. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching The Haircut. I hope you agree, enjoyed the program. I hope you got a lot out of what we did here. And I look forward to seeing you again on another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.